world shaped by technology that's constantly advancing. Your parents didn't carry around cell phones smaller than a deck of cards, have computers that fit in their backpacks, or send emails to friends across the country. Some of the technology being developed today gives us a glimpse of what's in store for our future. One of the most promising technologies out there is the hydrogen-powered fuel cell. It has the potential to change energy use as we know it today. We depend on energy for everything, from powering cars, heating and cooling homes, running factories, and even heating that leftover pizza in the microwave. That's why we came to this technology exhibit, to check out the future, the future of energy, that is. Today, we get most of our energy from fossil fuels. I'm sure you've studied fossil fuels, like natural gas, oil, and coal. These are non-renewable resources, so they can't be replaced in a short amount of time. They are actually thought to take millions of years to form. That means there's only a limited supply. But that doesn't mean our need for energy will be decreasing anytime soon. In fact, people expect our demand for energy to get even higher in the next 20 years. The United States consumes 25% of the world's oil, and yet it produces just 10% of the global supply of oil. Over 55% of the oil used in the United States is imported from other countries, and this is expected to grow steadily to around 70% by the year 2025. Fossil fuels are important to our economy. They are currently the most cost-effective source of energy to power the nation's vehicles and factories. From an economic perspective, this means fossil fuels help us maintain our standard of living. Fossil fuels and other forms of energy are needed in developing nations, too, to grow their economies and raise the living standards. It's important to think about the environment when using fossil fuels, too. When you burn any fossil fuel, such as gasoline, it produces carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gases work like glass in a greenhouse wall. They allow sunlight to come into the Earth's atmosphere, but prevent heat from escaping. Some people believe the production of greenhouse gases contribute to global warming, the heating of the Earth's atmosphere. So what's being done to help solve future energy needs? For one, alternative fuel sources are being developed that can be made from renewable energy resources. Renewable energy resources are those that can be used over and over again, like solar power, wind power, biomass from wood, garbage and agricultural waste, geothermal, or heat from the earth, and hydropower, energy from moving water. One alternative fuel source that holds a lot of hope for the future of energy is hydrogen. Hydrogen is the most abundant element on earth. So as energy demands increase, focus is shifting to hydrogen as a primary source of energy. But one of the challenges with using hydrogen is that you don't find it floating by itself. It's always bonded to another element, such as oxygen and water, or the carbon in a hydrocarbon-based fuel, such as natural gas. The energy to extract hydrogen needs to come from either a non-renewable or renewable resource. And since it doesn't exist naturally in a pure form, it has to be derived from a variety of sources. Hydrogen can be created all over the country using many different kinds of power, including wind in the Midwest, solar energy in California in the Southwest, hydroelectric power in the Northwest, coal in the Northeast, natural gas in the Rocky Mountains, or oil in the Gulf States. Fuel cell technology combines hydrogen and oxygen to generate electricity. Fuel cells could be the power source of the future playing an important role in everyday lives. In the future, fuel cells have the potential to power our homes, businesses, cars, and even our electronics, like cell phones, laptops, or portable video games. Fuel cell development could promote economic growth and help generate new jobs. So I get how important hydrogen fuel cells are, and that they could be one of our main sources of energy in the future. But how exactly does a fuel cell work? Fuel cells power a car or provide electricity to a home the same way they power a light bulb. Much like a battery, a fuel cell produces electric power from hydrogen through a chemical reaction. But unlike batteries, fuel cells don't need to be recharged. They will produce power as long as there's hydrogen fuel. Fuel cells generate electricity from a chemical process that combines two elements, oxygen and hydrogen. Oxygen is readily available in the air, but pure hydrogen must be added. Inside the fuel cell, pressurized hydrogen gas, or H2, is pumped through the negatively charged anode. It splits into two positively charged hydrogen ions and two negatively charged electrons. The protons pass through the fuel cell's membrane, 
but the electrons go through an external circuit and return to the cathode side of the fuel cell. Oxygen, or O2, from the air, enters the fuel cell on the positively charged cathode side. Each oxygen atom attracts two hydrogen ions and two of the electrons from the external circuit to form a water molecule, or H2O. This process repeats and generates electricity, and the only emission is water. A stack of fuel cells can create enough current to power a vehicle, an office, or even an entire community. This is pretty cool. What did you say we could use fuel cells to generate electricity for? Weren't you listening? We could use fuel cells for pretty much everything. Cars, buses, trucks, houses, offices, factories, cell phones, you name it. We're standing in front of GM's Autonomy. It's the world's first futuristic concept vehicle to combine a hydrogen fuel cell with bi-wire technology. Actually, this is my car. You wish. Fuel cells convert the chemical energy of hydrogen into electricity and heat without burning the hydrogen. The energy can be used to power an electric motor in a car. Unlike vehicle engines today that burn fossil fuels, the only products of vehicles powered by fuel cells are pure water and heat. So fuel cells can help minimize the automobile's impact on the planet. Each individual fuel cell only generates a small amount of power. To produce a usable amount of energy to power a vehicle, a bunch of fuel cells must be banded together in a fuel cell stack about the size of a suitcase. The fuel cell stack is only part of the whole system. Other critical parts of the system include the fuel tank, air compressor, and electric motor. The fuel cells, bi-wire system, and electric motors for the high wire and autonomy are housed in a chassis or supporting frame, which is called a skateboard because it looks like one. So all of the car's working parts are there in the base, or skateboard-like chassis. The car is controlled electronically by the bi-wire technology system, which adjusts wires and levers so there isn't a need for the steering column, foot pedals, an engine or transmission, a dashboard, or any mechanized parts that we're used to seeing in vehicles today. That means the driver can sit anywhere in the vehicle. There already are fuel cell vehicle prototypes on the road today. The Hydrogen 3 is making deliveries and is being test driven by government officials in Washington, D.C. Hydrogen is pumped into the vehicle just like gasoline is pumped into cars today at fueling stations. Today, some 800 million people around the world own motor vehicles. By 2020, that number will increase to more than a billion. Growing demand for personal transportation will create environmental and energy concerns. That's why hydrogen fuel cells show so much promise. They have environmental advantages over conventional fossil fuel engines because they emit zero tailpipe emissions. There are still some obstacles to overcome in getting fuel cell vehicles in the public's driveways. Some of these obstacles are hydrogen storage, cost, which has to become affordable, and infrastructure, including hydrogen fueling stations, which need to be developed. But these issues are smaller hurdles for stationary fuel cells, which will one day generate power for homes, office buildings, and neighborhoods. A stationary fuel cell generator is already at work creating power for one of the world's largest chemical plants. 
A byproduct of the chemical processes at Dow Chemical Company's Freeport, Texas plant is hydrogen. Using one of GM's stationary fuel cells, that hydrogen is being converted into electricity and heat. The fuel cells there are generating as much power as 75 homes would consume. The hope for stationary fuel cells in the future is that they can also inexpensively generate electricity for developing countries that are lacking that power today. If fuel cells can be used to make a car this amazing, can you imagine what it can do for other kinds of technologies? The microfuel cells that are being developed for cell phones can help you talk for a month without charging your phone. Nice! Even rechargeable batteries eventually have to be replaced because the capacity for storing energy lessens the more the battery is charged and discharged. But a fuel cell power supply has the potential to output full power virtually indefinitely. Microfuel cells could be used on almost anything that has traditionally used batteries, from laptops and portable music players to hearing aids and smoke detectors. And they have the potential to last more than three times as long as batteries between refueling. So when can we expect to see all of this fuel cell technology at stores and on the road? There are many corporations and governments working independently and together across the nation and internationally to bring about the hydrogen economy. The hydrogen economy is an energy system where hydrogen is used for energy storage, distribution, and utilization. It's a system that, once it's in place, will mean that hydrogen is produced cleanly and domestically from a variety of sources, that hydrogen is delivered and stored on a routine basis, and that hydrogen-powered fuel cells are as common as gasoline engines are today. The hydrogen economy may take the next several decades to evolve, but the transition to the hydrogen economy has already begun. As you saw, advanced technologies are being developed and tested to produce, store, transport, and use hydrogen in everyday applications. Research is being done to bring down the cost of fuel cells and to develop storage devices. Beyond corporations working with each other and the government to transition to the hydrogen economy, the United States called for an international partnership for the hydrogen economy. It is made up of 16 member countries meant to evaluate and coordinate research and development on the transition to a global hydrogen economy. From the Industrial Revolution to the Computer Age to the hydrogen economy, innovation has pushed the envelope of science and technology. The promise of hydrogen is a cleaner environment, a more productive economy, and a brighter future. Fuel cells, driving the future.